Hey, what's going on everybody? Brandon Charleston here recording another quick tutorial. One of the big things in my opinion that's very popular in 2024 that I think you should learn or level up as far as uh, skills is concerned is learning what an API is and learning the basics of how to work and navigate through APIs. API is essentially an application programmable interface and it's really kind of like the roadways or the highways uh, where data is sent and received. Think of it if you're going to make a call to like your friend or to a business call or something like that you're really making a request where you're sending or you're receiving information or if you're going to run an errand usually it's you yourself right you're authorized um, you are like taking something like a payload or something to somewhere where you're either going to make a request or you're going to receive something right it's kind of like running errands sending and receiving data and uh, if you're doing things on the internet which you're probably doing since you're watching this video uh, literally everything you do and no matter what button you click, <clears throat> what website you go to, in fact, your browser is basically an interface for making API calls. Um, and so literally everything you do is revolved around API calls, both internally and publicly. And I'm here to show you a little bit of a demonstration on what it is, the fundamentals of what you can do to at least get a, a somewhat of an understanding of it and scratch the surface so you're not going cross-eyed uh, but also to leave you with a little bit more homework if you will of learning uh, you know how to actually start to grasp uh, what it's like to read API documents things like that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a, a quick clay table as an example and then we're gonna do a little bit of a beginner demonstration and then you should be well on your way so let's go ahead and dive in so here I am uh, in a clay table as I mentioned before if you're not familiar with Clay, it is essentially a spreadsheet uh, that can make a lot of API calls, really any API, API call that you want. Um, well, there's a number of API or number of integrations that are essentially API calls, and it's just making your life a whole lot easier if it's already integrated. Um, and if it's not, then I'm gonna show you how you can uh, basically have the keys to the internet and really go wherever you want. So. Um, not a shameless plug, but uh, you know, I myself uh, put myself on the table just because, you know, it's a good example, I should say. Uh, no, no pun intended there. Um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to go to add a column and Richmond, and then we're just going to do HTTP API. Now, as you can probably assume, there are a number of integrations. Uh, where clay is essentially added for you and you can think none other than what these are is API calls. What these are doing is these are taking vendors and sending information or doing a get request or a post request um, and don't lose me here. Uh, essentially we're sending or receiving data uh, which are then receiving into this table for us to be able to leverage and you know append and and really use the data in order to navigate it in a way that we want to, right? That is the power and the value proposition of something like Clay is where we can really centralize data, put it in a good context for something like AI, for us to research and understand the, um, you know, the goal or the output that we're looking for. And so what we'll do is just uh, go HTTP API. And um, biggest thing here is Really, the majority of API calls, especially for here, are very simple. Uh, they're not complicated. API calls can certainly get very complicated. Um, and if you're looking at code, it's very easy to go cross-side. Uh, but I will say is really the two things that you should really be familiar with is a GET request and a POST request. Now these, uh, you know, there's different, depending on the API documents, really, if you're doing a GET request, you're really like asking for information. So you're, you're trying to receive something uh, or make a query towards getting um, some sort of response uh, from the provider, right? And if you're posting something, you're basically handing it off or you're sending it out to something uh, where it's essentially a new, uh, a new output, right? Uh, and you know, that's not hard and fast. I have done get requests where, you know, you're, you're requesting something, but you have to send like a payload, like a, some sort of data. It's kind of like if you're going to Starbucks or getting a coffee, you're you're requesting a coffee, but in order to do that, you gotta you got the payload is you gotta give them some cash, right? You can get it for free. Um, or and then a post request is basically like me handing my daughter uh, the pooper scooper and saying, go pick up some 
some dog poop in the backyard, right? That's a post request. Uh, so hopefully uh, that re resonates with you. You know, getting the coffee, that's a get request. You know what I mean? Exchange for, for money. And then uh, barking orders at your kids. Uh, you know, tomorrow's my daughter's 10th birthday. So, you know, top of mind kind of thing. But uh, anyway, so that's the difference between a get request and a post request. Those are the two most popular ones that, in my opinion, you should be most familiar with. Obviously, they can get a lot deeper there, but I'll leave that to you to uh, go about your own uh, way. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a simple request um, to send this data elsewhere, uh, which is another one of my favorite platforms called N8N. And I use this tons uh, to help streamline a lot of operations. Um, I make my own AI agents um, to do tasks and you know, really any sort of number of things. And I don't want to go into the weeds of the differences and why on, you know, to use Clay or N8N or Make or Zapier. That's a whole nother video. Uh, but more or less, you're making API calls. And this is how you kind of figure out how you want to navigate data, split it out, parse it, that kind of thing. And uh, you'll be able to kind of get a flow of uh, how it works. So what we're going to do right here is uh, we're going to do start with a webhook. So really, uh, in any scenario, there's usually some sort of trigger. And this is really in everyday life. There's there's some sort of event or a trigger <clears throat> or an instance uh, where data needs to initiate or, or move somewhere, right? And so in this one, we're going to do a webhook, which is basically, you know, in everyday terms saying, hey, you know, I'll be ready when you when you need me kind of thing. Like, call me if you need me. So if you have a buddy or somebody that just says, all right, cool, you know, I'll just wait for your call, you know, whenever you're ready or, you know, if we're going to go out to dinner, you know, with, with my wife or something like that. And she says, all right, just call me. You know, she's basically giving me a webhook uh, to, to initiate or let her know, right? So think of it like that. So uh, a webhook is we're going to go into here. And what you'll notice is this is there's a test URL and a production URL. Don't uh, worry too much about that. But you can clearly see that this is saying to get do a get request. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy that. And we're going to do that. We're going to do a get request. And then we're going to put the endpoint. Now the endpoint, think of it like your destination. So we we want to you're going to do wherever you're going. So if I'm going to call a business and ask them about something, I, the, the business is the endpoint. Whereas this, this is basically the endpoint. There's always going to be some URL endpoint uh, where you either want to receive data or send data, right? And so uh, so that's, uh, that's the endpoint, okay? We're doing a get request. And then um, on this particular one, you know, you're going to need, uh, sometimes you'll need headers. It's actually more common than not that you'll need to send what you call headers. Um, and usually headers will be, uh, you'll have what you call an API token. And so that's unique to you. You should definitely keep those uh, very secure. Uh, don't let them get out in the wild because uh, bad things happen. It's kind of like a credit card, right? You don't want to leave that out to the wild. And then uh, you're also, there's sometimes going to be um, another header, which is pretty common but it's called content type, and then usually it's application JSON. So um, it's, it kind of looks like this. You'll see this very common, content type, and then uh, application JSON. And so uh, that's pretty common, but for this one, I don't think it's needed, so we're not gonna do that. But you know, don't be surprised if you see that all the time. And so, and then usually what you'll do is you'll see something like this, X API key, and then you, you'll have like a bunch of nonsense which is your api token right so uh so that's the common thing there when it comes to headers and then you'll have the body now the body generally is raw json and so json is spelled like this not json like your boy um or you know your friend or whatever but uh json means javascript uh object notation and so what it is is it's it's a JavaScript language or part of the language where it makes it easy for a computer to extract data and read data. And it's also easy on the eyes to look at data too. And then with JSON, you have, this is essentially the payload. So think of it like, this is what I'm carrying. If I need to take something somewhere, this is what I'm going to give them, right? It's the payload. And so um, with any sort of JSON, typically what you'll see is you'll have open curly brackets, 
And then what you'll wanna do, there's always gonna be a key and a value. And then if you notice here, oh, I don't wanna do that. We will, well, we'll see where that goes uh, when we receive it. But generally speaking, you're gonna have a key and a value. So that's the big thing here. And um, you'll see what I'm talking about here. So for this instance, we're gonna, we're just gonna space it out, one, two, three, four. I just like to keep tabs on organization. But we're gonna do quotes. Uh, we're gonna say uh, full name. And then we're gonna do a colon. And then we're gonna hit slash, and I'm just gonna say full name. And then with Clay, you don't need to put these in quotes because it does that for you. And we'll hit enter. Actually, we're gonna hit comma because we're going into a new one, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do email as the key. And then the value, we're gonna send the value because we wanna send this data over. And you don't always need to manually type it out. One common thing that I'll suggest as well is definitely use ChatGPT or Claude uh, to help you formulate the JSON body. You know, a lot of times you may have a, a missing curly bracket or a comma or anything. Like they're, these computers, they, they're finicky sometimes. So um, I would say if you're reading the API docs and you're going cross-eyed or you just find yourself slowing down, Deep, definitely be aware of that because it'll do that to you. Um, just punch that into um, you know ChatGPT or Claude, and you'll definitely uh, be good to go. So, and then you know what? We're just gonna for S and Gs, we're gonna send a website. For those that don't know what S and Gs are, it's basically shits and giggles. So anyway, um, and company domain. Yeah, we'll leave. And then okay, so because this is the last one, we're not gonna do a comma, and then I need to do a close curly bracket. So this is essentially the payload. So I have my endpoint, I have a get request because that's what this calls for. And then uh, that's basically it. So webhooks, we got to basically turn it on and make it active. So we're gonna do listen for test event. So this is basically saying like, hey, call me, let me know when you're ready. All right, that's the big thing here when, when you're sending a webhook. We're gonna hit save. And, uh, oh no, that's no bueno. What's going on here? All right, let's, uh, come on, Clay. Let's see here. Um, this is part of uh, getting that, that stuff going here. All right, we're gonna copy this and we're gonna do a get request. We're gonna, do that and uh, there we go all right cool so I'm gonna go ahead and send it and hopefully we get a 200 response there it is all right so if you get a 200 then it's good to go I mean anything in 200s you'll see like 200 to a one etc etc but that basically means that uh, we sent the data over and workflow has started now if you notice when we go over here you'll see that it has received all the data right here right so I've sent data from Clay over to N8N, and here we are. And then if you wanna continue the workflow, I could essentially you know, do AI. I can, I can do a number of things, and this is a whole nother conversation, but this is where I can navigate the data and do whatever the heck I want to. Um, in fact, we can just do a demonstration here. Let's do, just do open AI. We'll just do, let's see here. Uh, message a model. We'll say here, sing a song, resource text. Let's see. Actually, yeah, we'll just do that. Sing a song about, and then we're going to do that. And then let's test output. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we gotta select a model, right? Okay, let's try that. I'm just doing a quick demo here, so. All right, it's running through um, GPT. So, open AI, sing a song about whatever. So, um, I'm not sure why it's taking too long here. But, uh, but yeah, so what I'm doing is I received the data, I'm running it through some sort of integration, and then. Um, it's taking so long. Anyway, all right, and then what we'll do, we're just gonna go and delete this. 
So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to do send back to webhook, Oop. or respond to webhook, first incoming item. And so this one, so essentially pretend like I sent the data, I don't want to get off course here, but then I can run a number of integrations. You can send it to your CRM, you could filter it, you could split it out, you could do, I mean, you could just look in all the things. And I don't want to go, like I said, go off course, but this is essentially being able to, you can do more HTTP API calls. Uh, there's a whole lot, right? So this is kind of where I'm talking about the freeway. Like you, you choose your route, right? Where do you want to go? Um, but then this one, usually what I'll do is I'll send data. So I received it from Clay. And then, then what I want to do is, oh, we got to stop that. Instead of immediately, I'm going to do using respond to webhook node. Okay. So what this is essentially doing is I'm sending data. I'm sending nothing. Nothing is happening, right? Uh, I could add a number of things. I can use AI. I could do whatever and then respond to webhook. So this is really just going to send the data back to Clay as the response, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go and listen for test event. And you see here where this says workflow has started. That means that I sent it, but let's just go ahead and resend it. There it is. All right, cool. So you can see I received more data, right? And you can see I received my data back. Okay. So this is the demonstration of I just sent data to any den or wherever, and then I'm receiving data back, right? So uh, anyhow, that basically does it. Um, I hope this was uh, helpful for you, you know, in learning all things API. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you do, if you're a recruiter, uh, SDR, BDR, uh, anything, or if you're just a founder that, you know, or you're trying to just really use some uh, some AI automation stuff, you know, if you found this channel randomly, thanks for uh, joining. Uh, but anyway, I really appreciate you watching up until the end. Please like and subscribe and uh, happy API making. So.